In this lesson, we are going to prove trigonometric identities. Let us first recall the following fundamental identities. It is very important that you memorize these identities by heart. We have the reciprocal identities, the quotient identities, and Pythagorean identities. Here are some of the common techniques in proving identities. Number one, we have algebraic techniques. It includes factoring or multiplying both numerator and denominator by the same expression. We also use this method of expressing the left-hand side and the right-hand side in terms of the sine and cosine function only. And of course, we will use previously known identities. Here is an example. We want to prove that tangent theta sine of theta plus cosine theta is equal to secant of theta. Now, what's important in proving identities is that you should not manipulate both sides of the equation at the same time. In proving identities, what you want to do is to establish, let's say, starting from the left-hand side and then working your way until you reach the right-hand side. You cannot, let's say, divide both sides, something like that. You cannot do this. Why is that? Whenever you are dividing both sides, you are already assuming that this is an equality. But what we want to prove is to really show that this is an equality. So that's why you cannot manipulate both sides of the equation. So for me, what I do is I always start with the more complicated expression and then I want to go to the simpler expression. In this case, the left-hand side is more complicated because it consists of two terms whereas the right-hand side consists only of one term. So I will proceed with the left-hand side, although you can also put the right-hand side here just so that you know where you want to go. My technique in this example is to express both sides in terms of sine and cosine function only. So for the right-hand side, secant theta is the reciprocal of cosine theta. So that means that this is my goal. I want to reach 1 over cosine theta. Let's look at our left-hand side. The left-hand side, I will express everything in terms of sine and cosine. Tangent of theta is sine of theta over cosine of theta. Then times my sine of theta plus cosine of theta. You want to end up with the right-hand side and that involves only one term. So that means that we have to combine these two expressions to have one expression. So the LCD is cosine theta. So cosine theta divided by cosine theta is 1 times sine squared theta plus Cosine theta divided by 1 is cosine theta times cosine theta is cosine squared theta. However, using our previous identity, what is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta? That is equal to 1. And there you go. You have your 1 over cosine theta. You can actually stop here because you have shown that the left-hand side and the right-hand side are both equal to 1 over cosine theta. Or if you want for the proof itself, what you can do is go back up. So from here, 1 over cosine theta is equal to secant theta and our secant theta is your right-hand side. So this would be the proof. You started with the left-hand side and you ended up with your right-hand side. Let's have another example. We want to show that secant theta minus cosine theta is tangent theta sine theta. Again, I will start with my left-hand side and then I will put my right-hand side here. Again, my technique is to express everything in terms of sine and cosine. Secant theta is 1 over cosine theta minus cosine theta. And then remember, do not manipulate both sides at the same time. So I am simplifying them separately. For the right-hand side, just so that I know where I would want to go, tangent theta is sine theta over cosine theta and then times sine of theta. So that means that we want to end up with sine squared theta over 
cosine of theta. So we want to combine this into a single expression so that we have this. The LCD is already cosine theta. This is 1. So just like what we did before, divide and then multiply. Cosine theta divided by cosine theta is 1. Times 1 is 1. Minus cosine theta divided by 1 is cosine theta. Times cosine theta is cosine squared theta. However, look at this. Let us recall our Pythagorean identity. Cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. And therefore, from here, look at that. 1 minus cosine squared theta is equal to sine squared theta. Again, you can stop here. You have shown that the left-hand side is equal to sine squared theta over cosine theta and the right-hand side is also equal to that same expression. Or, again, you may want to trace your way back here. So, you write sine squared theta cosine theta as, copy that, sine theta over cosine theta times sine theta, which is now equal to your tangent theta sine theta, which is your right-hand side. But for me, the more formal way of proving this is starting from one side and ending up at the other side. Another example. So the right-hand side is simpler. The right-hand side is cotangent x, which in terms of sine and cosine is cosine x over sine x. So this is where we want to go. For the left-hand side, we will combine this expression so that we will end up with one expression. Our LCD is the product of sine and 1 plus cosine x. This divided by sine x is 1 plus cosine x times 1. So that's 1 plus cosine x minus this divided by this is sine x times sine x. So that's sine squared x. Look at 1 minus sine squared x. I will put them together. We can write 1 minus sine squared x as, what is that? That is cosine squared x, correct? It came from our Pythagorean identity, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. Notice what you want to end up with. You have sine x. That means that you want to cancel your 1 plus cosine x here, which means that the numerator should have a factor of 1 plus cosine x. Look at the numerator. It has a common factor of cosine x. So that's why when we factor out the cosine x, we're left with cosine x plus 1. These two things are equal, so that's why we have cosine x over sine x, which is precisely your cotangent x, which is your right-hand side. Here's another one. We have this expression equals 2 cosecant x. We want to end up with 2 cosecant x or 2 over sine x. So for the left-hand side, let us first combine this into a single expression. Our LCD is the product of 1 plus cosine x and sine x. Divide this by 1 plus cosine x. We get sine x times sine x, so that's sine squared x plus this divided by sine x is 1 plus cosine x times 1 plus cosine x, so that's the square of 1 plus cosine x. Let us expand the numerator. 
the square of a binomial is square the first term plus twice the product. So you have 2 cosine x plus the square of the last term. I want you to look at sine squared x plus cosine squared x. That is our Pythagorean identity and that is equal to 1. So therefore we have 1 plus 1 plus 2 cosine x. This is 2 plus 2 cosine x. And now we can factor 2. So we have 2 times 1 plus cosine x. And that will cancel our 1 plus cosine x in the denominator. So we have 2 over sine x, which is exactly your 2 cosecant x. I will put it here. Which is now equal to your right hand side. Next, we have 5 cosecant squared plus cotangent squared plus 1. Recall one of the three Pythagorean identities and that is cotangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to cosecant squared theta. And therefore, for the left hand side, I will write this cotangent squared theta as cosecant squared theta. This is now 5 cosecant squared theta plus cosecant squared. You have your 6 cosecant squared theta and cosecant squared theta is the reciprocal of sine squared theta, which is our right hand side. This example shows us that it is very important that you use your previously known identities to prove new identities. You should not always use the writing in terms of sine and cosine, although you can do that in this example, but it will turn out that you will have longer steps in proving the identities. One more example, we have 1 minus sine squared theta times 1 plus tangent squared theta is equal to 1. Again, for this one, I will be using one of our Pythagorean identities. Recall that 1 plus tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. And therefore, of course, we will start with the left-hand side because it is more complicated. We have 1 minus sine squared theta times your 1 plus tangent squared theta is precisely equal to secant squared theta. What is 1 minus sine squared theta? That is cosine squared theta. But of course, secant squared theta is the reciprocal of cosine squared theta. So that's why you really have 1 and that is your right hand side. For our last example, what I will do here is I will start with the right hand side because it has two terms. I want to end up with cotangent squared theta, cosine squared theta. First, I will write cotangent squared theta minus cosine squared theta in terms of sine and cosine only. Cotangent squared theta is cosine squared theta over sine squared theta. And look at where you're going. You want to go to the left hand side, which in this case has a factor of cosine squared theta. But from here, I will now factor out that cosine squared theta. So I have 1 over sine squared theta minus 1. You already have cosine squared theta here. 
So that means that what you want to show is that this expression is equal to cotangent squared theta. What is 1 over sine squared theta? That is cosecant squared theta. And recall from our Pythagorean identities, what is cosecant squared theta minus 1? That is precisely your cotangent squared theta. Recall that cotangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to cosecant squared theta. So hence, cosecant squared theta minus 1 is cotangent squared theta. And this is now your left-hand side.